All right. Uh, you know, I want to first of all start out with our thoughts and prayers with Aubrey Hill and his family. Uh, Aubrey worked for me at the uh, University of Florida, was a great Gator, uh, a great friend. A coaching profession certainly took a blow yesterday. His wife, Shanae, and his son, Aubrey Jr., uh, also coached at Carroll City, coached Rashad Fenton, who's a, a great Gamecock here at the University of South Carolina. And uh, uh, just, just thoughts and prayers are with them going through this very difficult time. I also want to recognize Rick Henry. who was diagnosed with prostate cancer last week. When I found out, I called Rick, and you know he's been such a pro in everything he does here in Columbia. I appreciate his friendship and, and his support of the University of South Carolina and support of our community here in Richland County and in Columbia. But he's going to beat this thing, and, and uh, he was very upbeat and positive, and I, I know you guys know Rick very well, but uh, absolute pro in everything he does. Uh, reporting day, I'll start with updating you on our roster. Uh, we added Jalen Brooks to our roster. Uh, we're putting a waiver together for the NCAA uh, for immediate eligibility. I appreciate Coach Seidel at uh, Blythewood, who coached him at Hickory Ridge in Charlotte. Uh, and his help, uh, you know, as far as those things are concerned, relationships are so key in recruiting, and uh, certainly he helped us a lot. Uh, of a roster update, Chandler Farrell is going to continue to play fullback and tight end, but he, we're also going to look at him at defensive tackle a little bit uh, to continue to build depth at that position. Another big guy that is athletic and can move around. Uh, as far as injuries are concerned, Jaheim Bell we think will be cleared in November. Uh, Spencer Easton really with the ACL, I would say 1st of September, he ought to be about full speed. Uh, Ernest Jones coming off the appendix 1st of September. Uh, uh, Rescindo Lewis with the quad end of September, 1st of October. Uh, we feel like he'll be cleared to be full speed. Eric Shaw, who had the bone spurs from high school, ought to be cleared by the end of August. And Chad Terrell with the ACL end of September, 1st of October. So that's kind of where we are injury-wise uh, with our first practice being tomorrow. I said it before, the mature, responsible teams are the ones that are going to be successful, the ones that are able to adapt and adjust uh, to a lot of different situations they are going to present themselves, which we're playing the what-if game a lot around here as far as who is up, who is down, uh, all of those things that we're going through as a staff as we've been going through really about the last month. Uh, we don't have any depth chart. I know everybody wants one, but right now everybody's got to be ready in all three phases. I mean, we, we, we're going we're to have to go through a lot of situational work uh, with guys in different spots to cross-train guys, which we normally do, but maybe even more so now. Guys cannot go into fall camp thinking I'm going to get red-shirted or this or that or the other. They've got to all get ready to play because you never know when your number is going to be called sitting in both the offensive meeting with Coach Bobo uh, with our offensive team today and, and, and Coach Robinson with the defensive team today. That was a huge emphasis of, of us as a staff is to be ready to go. Be ready when your number's called. Uh, the standard doesn't change. Be ready to go play at a championship level. We've got 40 days with 25 practices, which I kind of like, uh, you know, really – until we get to game week, we'll never practice more than three days in a row. I think that's good for the players. It limits some of the contact uh, to help. Obviously, I think will help with some of the soft tissues, things that you go through uh, during camp. So with that being said, I'll open it up for any questions you might have. David Kleiniger has the first question, Dave. Hey, well, like, yeah. You mentioned a few times that the mature and responsible teams will win this season. Just how difficult is it as a coaching staff to talk to a young man and say, you know, I know you got a girlfriend and your parents might want to take you out to eat and you just can't have that normal college life right now. How difficult is it to tell those kids that? Well, it's, it's very difficult. And I, I told our coaches, let's be realistic. I mean, you, I think, David, the, 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 the frustrating part of this is you can be extremely careful, go through a drive through Somebody sneezes on your food, and you could get the coronavirus. I hate to say that, but I see your look there, John Whittle. You don't look very good after I said that. But, uh, but that's true. And, and I've had people that I know personally that have been extremely careful. And unfortunately, in, in, a, in a, a, a situation, they, they put themselves uh, where, where they got the virus, and it's, it's, we're all at risk. And you know, Call it like it is. We need to limit the amount of exposure to uh, the unknown. And that's what we keep – referencing to our players, be around people you know, be around you know, your, your cluster uh, that you've been with. Uh, we're trying to emphasize those things as much as possible. Ben Breiner has the next question. Ben. Hey, Will. Um, when you're working through a quarterback situation in a preseason camp, how do you kind of try to attack it in terms of giving guys maybe equal reps and then sort of tapering down as you get closer to a season? Well, again, I think, you know, as far as, you know, just overall throws, we're going to have more off days than we've had. 
which will help obviously with arm soreness and things like that. But you know, we're going to give these guys as many reps as possible. We go and we chart everything, chart what group they're with. We chart uh, drops. We we chart all all different things as far as accuracy, as far as with the football. We're obviously putting us in the right run game, the right protection. So everything's charted every day as far as where we are with the quarterback position is concerned, and that's the way we'll continue to do it. Next question is Mike Kuba. Uh, Coach, you kind of hit on it, but, you know, obviously you guys are no stranger to having to, to step up. One guy down, having to step up in these last couple of years with injuries, but with this virus now this year, you know, how important does that depth really become? And have you and your staff discussed the possibility of repping some of the twos and threes a little bit more in comparison to in previous years? Well, no doubt about it. We've got to be very fluid, uh, you know, with our, our our different groups that we're repping through, and making sure that those guys are getting the turns and the reps that they need. And there's no question, Mike, that I think you're exactly right. You've got to be very, very fluid with our guys as far as being able to move guys up and down. Uh, be very demanding on on what the expectation, regardless of what year you are, the experience you have. Uh, or talent level, you, we got to play at a championship level, and that's what we're going to continue to emphasize to our players, regardless of who's in the game. Let's go to Gene Sapikoff, Post and Courier. Will, what's the update, and how has Ortre Smith been doing so far in practice? He's been doing well. He's been, you know, but we've we've really it's been more of a walkthrough setting. I, I wouldn't say that there's been a lot of football that's taken place. We did have some opportunities when they upped it to the 20 hour week, and we were able to do some football activity with our guys on the field, uh, and he looked good in those situations. And uh, you know, we look forward to him being productive this fall. Also, Will, the University of North Carolina just announced they are going to online classes only for this fall. How concerned are you about what's going on on campuses, not just in Columbia, but from what you've heard all around? Sure. Well, I think, Gene, it's a, certainly a concern. Um, but, you know, again, we've got to use our best judgment as we continue to move forward and understand uh, to not put ourselves in the exposure of the unknowns. Uh, we've stressed that to our players as many times as we can. The majority of the classes that our guys are taking are online. Uh, there were some in in-person classes that some of our guys needed to take away with his graduation, whether it was because of major or they felt more comfortable in the classroom. And some guys, you know, you know, came to us and said they feel more comfortable. And some guys came to us and said they did not want to be in a classroom. So we tried to accommodate those guys the best we could as far as that's concerned. But certainly it's a concern. You know, anytime you start dealing with the unknown uh, and, and it's hard to control uh, some of the uncontrollables you have. So I, I choose to try and control what we can control, and that's within this building, and it's trusting our players to make mature, responsible decisions. Next question goes Derek Boynton. Hey, Coach, it was uh, just obviously announced a little bit earlier uh, publicly your first uh, game is going to be hosting Tennessee. Just kind of your thoughts on opening with the Volunteers. It's become a Pretty good uh, in-conference rivalry, and I know it's a new year, but that's a team that certainly had a strong ending the last season. Yeah, they did. They ended very well uh, the season. You, know, I remember, you know, our game up there last year. We had all the momentum. We have a 75-yard touchdown drive before half. Brian makes a fantastic uh, catch on the on the goal line there, and we we get the score. We have all the momentum, but you give up 14 points. Uh, and your defense isn't on the field. It's hard to win on the road in the Southeastern Conference. And we actually gave up 35 points last year, and our defense wasn't on the field. So, didn't do as much, uh, you know, offensively in the second half, and we gave up too many explosive plays defensively. But they certainly turned it around and played extremely well. They've recruited well. I've got a lot of respect for Jeremy and and uh, obviously their their entire staff. They do a really good job. Next question goes to Pete Akabelli, the AP. Uh, hey, Will, I think since the last time we talked to you, the Pac-10, uh, Pac-12 and the Big Ten uh, pushed their seasons to the spring. Do you do you have an opinion about that or, or what do you think about that? And did any players or their families come to you and say, hey, is that something like that under discussion here in the SEC? I, I'm sure on the commissioner and the athletic d director and the president level that probably had, had come up. As far as coaches were concerned and the conversations we had um, once we announced the 10-game schedule and kicking off on September 26th, that's all we've been focused on. And that's really the only conversations that I have. I can't comment for other conferences and other leagues and the decisions they make. 
Uh, Commissioner Sankey's been very prudent in his approach uh, uh, to this whole process. He has said all along that the coronavirus would determine the timeline, uh, and he wanted to be as patient as he could be almost to a point of being very frustrating for us as coaches and, and for our players because of the uncertainty uh, out there of, of when things were going to start to evolve and happen. Uh, but certainly, you know, him continuing to listen to our medical uh, staff uh, that he appointed in March uh, got ahead of the game probably than the other leagues as far as that's concerned uh, to get us the right information. And, and again, it goes back to the health and well-being of the student athlete. That's paramount. That's the most important thing, and that's always going to be the most important thing. And, and we're at a point right now where we're moving forward uh, with our season. And until some, somebody tells me differently, I look forward to kicking off on the 26th of September. Josh Kendall has the next question. Josh? Well, just – one quick point before something else. Do you go into fall with Ryan Halinski as the starting quarterback, or do you go into fall with an open quarterback competition? No, we've got an open competition, not just a quarterback, but across the board. And everybody's got to earn their opportunity and earn their playing time, and those guys will continue to rotate just like they have been in our walkthrough situations, uh, whether it's Jay Urich, whether it's Colin Hill, or whether it's um, Luke Doty. Those guys will continue to rotate. Uh, a different subject where is your condition given all this where is your team conditioning as opposed to where it might have where it usually would be coming into a um I, I would not say that it's where it normally is i would say that there are probably some guys that are in really good condition right now and i would say that we have a very small percentage of our team that's going to need some extra work as we continue to work through now thank goodness we have 40 days instead of 30 uh, which we would normally have in a, in, a, in a training camp situation to continue to get guys in better conditioning to endure the season. So we've got some time here, and again, that was always on our side uh, because of Commissioner Sankey's approach. Uh, but I would say that we're not as – we're probably not where we normally are, but I don't think that we're very far off, Josh. I do think there is a small percentage of our guys because of quarantine and maybe some other issues that, that we need a little more work. And in terms of – practice will will you structure anything differently to get more guys ready and can GAs etc now work have they loosened the rules that those guys could help you more no but G GAs have always been allowed to work no different than a full-time coach analysts cannot as far as any instru okay. any instruction on the field and we we are going to structure some things a little differently uh, for reps purposes uh, and, and I think some, some to take off some of the older guys reps wise, as especially early in camp, because I don't, again, I don't think from a conditioning standpoint, we may be where we probably were uh, in, in summers past because of the work. Thank you. Let's go to Joe Gorchow. Hi, Coach. Hope you're doing well today. In terms of handling practice and getting started and having the players all back on campus now. How much do you preach more about life lessons than worrying about the X's and O's considering all the unknowns around this virus and the uncertainty of the season itself? Well, Joe, I think that's a conversation every day uh, with our guys. I think we've, we've been very transparent with our guys as far as uh, dealing with the virus. We're all at risk. Uh, players, coaches, staff, uh, we're, we're all at risk. And we all got to make really good decisions as far as washing our hands, as far as wearing a mask, as far as the social distancing things are concerned. And those are emphasized in every meeting on the field. Uh, you know, th those are things that we're constantly talking to our players about in those situations. But uh, I think today was, uh, you know, always when we start camp, we try to get to know each other better uh, on, a, on a player to coach a relationship, from a player to player relationship. And a lot of those meetings took place today. Hale McGranahan is next question. Hale. Yeah, um, as, as far as when it comes to teams having to dis disclose infections with the virus, is there some sort of a uniform, I guess, code or, or, or route that the teams are going to be able to take or have to take the, the way everyone's uniform with, with how things are disclosed? You know, standpoint. I know that we have a uniform testing agency, but I have not been informed of anything as far as announcing, uh, as far as those things are concerned by the, by the league. I know we'll be tested on Sunday, Wednesday, and Friday, three times a week. And, uh, and that's really all I know right now, Hale. And, and I guess you're probably still a little bit in the dark like everyone else when it comes to the recruiting side of 
of what you guys are going to be able to do. I can't imagine you're anticipating anybody being able to come to campus, but as far as your staff being able to get out on the road and do like you normally would for, for games on Friday nights, any idea what that might look like? I have, I have no idea. I know it's dead through September, uh, the end of September. Uh, we've been informed that. I think they're going to do this on a month-to-month -month basis based on you know where things are. Uh, obviously, there's some states that are playing football. There's some states that aren't playing football as far as high school is concerned. Uh, so uh, you, you, we'll, we'll figure that out as we continue to move forward. Our, my biggest concern right now is the guys we got on campus. Obviously, recruiting is a forefront uh, priority, uh, and we, we're continuing to work through that right now. Let's go to Colin Taylor, Gamecock Central. Hey, well, you kind of mentioned – Jalen Brooks, I guess, is there a timeline of when you know about his waiver? How optimistic are you? And if that does happen, if he gets immediately eligible, what kind of impact do you think he can make this year? Well, just in the short time we've been with him, he, he runs around extremely well. He's a big physical guy. He's very intelligent. He learns extremely well. So in a very short time, he's made a very favorable impression on our staff. Uh, but again, I, there, with those waivers, you know, Colin, you never know. You never know exactly when, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll I'm sure they, there's, because of what we're going through, there's a lot out there. There's a lot on the NCAA's plate right now. Uh, we do feel good about uh, s some family situations that, uh, that we feel like are real uh, and that uh, we feel that he should be ruled in favorably to play this year. Let's go to Chantel Powell. Chantel. Hey, Coach. Uh, thanks for doing this. Um, just with the freshman class, how have they been dealing with all of this this entire process? And have you had to do anything differently to really get them acclimated and make sure they're ready to go this season? Yeah, Chantal, you know, when they first came in, uh, we, we worked in four different lift groups, and they had their own lift group as far as about the first three and a half to four weeks to make sure they were acclimated to the weight room, the proper fundamentals and techniques in the weight room, maybe not moving as high a weight. Uh, Paul Jackson and his staff did a really good job of orienting them to the weight room to make sure – uh, that they were ready to go as far as those things are concerned. But I've been extremely impressed on both sides of the ball uh, with those freshmen. And we had obviously a lot here mid-year on campus. Uh, a lot of these guys are going to contribute to our football team this fall. Over these next 40 days, uh, we'll determine how much they'll contribute to us and, and, and how they do throughout camp. But I've been extremely pleased with this class. Next question goes to Phil Kornblut. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> sorry about that. You got to unmute it. Going here. There you go. Um, thank you, Will, for uh, joining us this afternoon. Sure. Uh, a couple of quick things. Uh, following up on the question about Brooks, what did you like about him as a player? Uh, why do you think a guy like that started out in, in D2 being overlooked and, and emerged as a major uh, player, major caliber player? And number two, um, where are you guys on the Mike Bobo investigation into that issue with him at a Colorado State? Sure. Well, first of all, with Jalen, he has grown a lot since he played in high school as far as his body is concerned. So his body's changed tremendously. Uh, we know some people that he throws with uh, that all reached out to us and talked about his work ethic, his athleticism, his hand-eye coordination, his ball skills. And, and his, his tape is really impressive and is, a, and is a position that we need some more productive guys and some more dependable guys at the position. So we continued to research him. We were extremely impressed with what we saw, and we felt like he can be a huge contributor to us. As far as the, you know, the Mike Bobo situation, the, the, those claims to me are completely absurd. Uh, I've known Mike since 1993. He doesn't have a ra racist bone in his body. And that's really all I'll comment at this time. I look forward to commenting further, but I don't want to give the article any more credibility because it doesn't deserve any. Next question goes to John Whittle. Hey, Coach. Uh, just a, another on practice structure. I, I noticed that this year, at least on this camp schedule, y'all are, are giving uh, Sundays off instead of Mondays. I think that's a flip-flop from last year. Is that something you're going to continue into the season? And if so, what's kind of the reasoning behind that? No, John, really, that's just in training camp. We, we kind of just the way the days fell. I didn't want to go any more than three days in a row as far as practice was concerned. So our typical in training camp is we're going to have Sundays completely off, which is mandated by the NCAA. Uh, and then Mondays will be a, 
a meeting slash workout day. And then we'll generally we'll be practicing Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then have some sort of team stretch and meeting on Friday. And then some form of a scrimmage, whether it's a full scrimmage or a half practice, half scrimmage, depending on where we are and, and what, what evaluation. The, the, the ninth practice will be a full scrimmage. I think that's the end of August. I don't have the exact date with me. But we're going to go back to end the season uh, to a, a, a Sunday practice, Monday off, uh, model uh, and then practicing Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, walk through on Friday. Uh, that really just the way it fell in training camp. But John, originally uh, we thought September was going to be open recruiting and, and we felt like we, not knowing what was going to happen on the back end of the virus, we were going to try and get all of our official visits done early in the season just in case things got cut off in late October, November, when they, you, know, you, you hear all the experts saying it's going to spike again. I wanted to at least get some exposure to our guys on campus. That's why we weren't going to practice on Sundays, and we we're going to practice on Mondays to be able to spend more time with the recruits if they were able to come on, on campus on Sundays. But now it's dead till the end of September, so that kind of eliminates that thought process uh, was what we originally thought. And that's why we originally had scheduled for our season to have off day on Sunday so we could spend time with recruits because it's difficult to do that when you're preparing with your team. Next, Next question goes to Bruce Nimmons of the Journal in Seneca. Hey, Will, thanks for doing this. Um, running back's a position where you all have had a lot of turnover over the last season. And last time you mentioned Zachandre White was still in quarantine. Is he out of quarantine? And are you interested in seeing what he adds to the backfield in the next few weeks? Absolutely. All of our players, we don't have anybody in quarantine at this time. Zaquandre was only quarantined because he came from out of state. And our CDC policy in the state of South Carolina is you're quarantined for seven days. So he was quarantined for that. Uh, but he's an explosive guy that's got really good top end speed. Uh, I think he brings a lot to that room. In the short time he's been here, our guys have really enjoyed uh, you know, him being here and being around. Uh, and I think we've got some ability in the room. Some of it's inexperience, but I'd rather be coaching a, an explosive, fast-twitch guy uh, that maybe lacks a little of experience at that position as opposed to an experienced guy that can't make any plays. Next question goes back to David Kloninger. Hey, well, I think you might have just answered it, but since last time we talked to you, have you guys had any positive corona tests? No, we tested our entire building today. I think it was about 245 tests this morning. Uh, staff, everybody in the building, all players, obviously, and we'll know those results probably tonight. And also, uh, thinking ahead a little bit, you know, normally you, you guys go to a hotel the night before a home game. Will you continue to do that uh, through this time? We will. We, we certainly will, yep. Next question goes to Ben Briner. Uh, hey, Coach, through this offseason, what have you seen from Josh Van, and kind of how important do you think these next few, these next uh, six weeks can be for him? Well, it's going to be huge for him. I mean, he, we got some guys at that position, especially. They need to start producing. Uh, so, you know, we've got some young guys we're excited about. Some, you know, Shy's obviously a guy that's been a, a productive player. Xavier Leggett's a guy that really came on in his freshman year to carry on, has done some nice things. We're going to play Luke Doty at receiver some, but these next six weeks are huge for Josh. You know, he's going into his junior year. You know, we need to get, we need to get more production out of some of these guys. Next question goes to Pete Acabelli. Well, you mentioned how uh, you've got nobody in quarantine. Do you feel like these protocols, this bubble you've created is has been effective for you this summer? And are there other phases if things get out of hand in a month from now when school's back in session, things like that? Do you have other, other uh, I don't know, tools that you can use to try and keep this under control? Well, again, that's, you know, I want to, again, I've said it before, Clint Haggard and his staff have done a phenomenal job. George Wynn, our director of football operations, of, of, of making sure we had all the right protocols in place. i got to credit our players. We, we didn't do as good early on in June that we've done recently. I think it was a learning process of understanding uh, what you probably could and couldn't do. And, and again, you're dealing with college-age kids. I mean, they're, they're going to be college kids, and we want them to be college kids. We just want them to do it very boring. Uh, lifestyle right now. That's that's the way we've got to lead our lives. So, uh, you know, as far as, you know, moving forward, we need to continue to make good decisions. Uh, there's no different protocols that we'll have as we continue to move forward, uh, you know, as far as those things are concerned. Let's go back to Colin Taylor. Hey, well, you kind of talked about 
I guess when quarantine started about a lot of these 2021 commitments being reservations, not it, how do you feel your recruiting has been over the last couple of weeks now that you've kind of gotten a plan in place and where do you, how much do you like this 2021 group currently? I do. I mean, I, I feel really good about where we are. We need to continue to address some needs, especially on the back end uh, in, the, in the secondary. I feel pretty good about where we are offensively. like to add another linebacker and, and another front guy. But we feel pretty good about where we are with the guys we've got. And, uh, and I think, you know, there's a long time till December. And, and I think there will be a lot of things that will change as we continue to move forward. Josh Kendall has the next question. Josh, your, your screen's not open up. I thought I would do everybody a favor. 2020 has been tough enough on everybody. We don't need that. Thank you very much. Uh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Anything I can do. Um, where? How concerned are you about mental fatigue because of all the uncertainty about the season? And where are your guys in that area right now as they begin what's normally the most mentally fatiguing part of the process? Well, I think that um... – some of the, the uncertainty now, obviously, when we announce a 10-game schedule, we announce the two new opponents. Uh, now we announce the first ball game, and at 7 o'clock we're going to announce we're going to be in a meeting. Um, but, 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 you know, we'll announce the rest of our schedule. That, that's going to create a lot of excitement for our guys. Our guys want to play. And at the end of the day, our guys want to play. They want to be safe, and we want them to be safe, and we're going to be safe, and then we want to play uh, as long as it is safe. And that's we're, we're making sure of that as we continue to work through this. But, you know, you got to have the right mindset going through training camp. That's something we've talked about today. We're going to continue to talk about tonight of improving every single day uh, and, and approaching the day the right way mentally to get, your, to, get, to get right physically to what you've got to do to endure a very difficult 10-game schedule. And, and our guys understand that. But I think as they continue to move forward and there's an end in sight of games, of opponents, those things make our guys really excited because they're excited about playing football. As their responsible entertainment options are, are very limited right now, have y'all done anything internally? I mean, movie night or anything just random to try to give them that kind of outlet? Well, I, I think that there at times, and I've talked to our leadership committee at times, that there are some really good ideas, and then there's some times where they just need some time away from us. We have spent more time around our players when we went from the third, from the uh, the eight-hour care a week uh, in June to I mean, excuse me, July 13th to the July 24th. We were a 20-hour week. And believe me, they, they enjoy being <laughs> doing the football stuff, but they like getting out of the building too. So uh, I think that we only went back to the, I guess it was a 14-hour week last week. Uh, so they've spent a lot of time in the building with us. We've spent a lot of t time together. Uh, we really, as far as what we would call true tra tra training camp is today and tomorrow and, and Wednesday, and then we start school on Thursday. So, uh, and then we've got some orientation, some different things some guys got to do. So, so some guys will be kind of in and out as far as practice is concerned. So, uh, I, I think that uh, there's something we talked to the leadership committee about some, some extra things, but we've, we spent a lot of time together more than we no, are no, normally doing. John Del Bianco has the next question. Hey, Coach, thanks for doing this. Do you have a, an idea of how many number of your guys will be wearing that? that face shield attachment that kind of goes over their mouth that's attached to the um, their face mask, or will they be wearing more of those pullover covers like you're wearing? I, I couldn't put a number on it. I know that uh, we are requiring to, to wear a face shield, and then when they're on the sideline, they need to have some sort of face covering, you know, on the sideline um, as we go through adjustments. So when they're sitting down, they have their helmet off, they need to have some sort of gaiter or mask on the sideline. Uh, and then while they're playing, they need some sort of face shield covering on their face on their fa face mask. Eric Boynton has the next question. Sorry about that, Coach. Just can you just describe how big of an advantage it is uh, for Colin Hill to have had such a close previously relationship with Coach Bobo, and just what that means for him coming into a new program. Well, sure. You know, Mike puts a lot on, a lot on, on the quarterback at the line of scrimmage, and I, there's no question it's uh, uh, something obvious will help him. But Ryan's working extremely hard. I came up here Sunday afternoon. Ryan's watching tape. He's in with Mike Friday afternoon uh, watching tape. Uh, so R Ryan's extremely bright, uh, working hard. Uh, you know, you got Jay Urich, you got Luke Doty. All of those guys are working extremely hard. The great thing 
uh, if there's a positive about what we've gone through as far as football is concerned, is the amount of time we've been able to spend with our players starting on July 13th. And we're able to spend time in the meeting room and get some walkthroughs done. You start on the 24th, we're able to go out there with a the ball, get a lot of walkthroughs done. So there's been a lot of teaching opportunities for our guys, anywhere from you know, 16, 18, 20 opportunities with them on the field, with them in the meeting room, which in normal situations, we would have never have had that going into training camp. So we're much further along schematically in all three phases uh, than we've ever been as far as that's concerned because we've been able to hit through the installation now two times, and now as we move into training camp, we'll be going through the installation three times, which is very beneficial for a new system, very beneficial for a young player uh, in, those, in that regard. Obviously, you mentioned uh, other guys on the roster as well, but bringing in a veteran like Hill who's you know, had some impressive numbers when he's been able to stay healthy. What is his presence in particular meant to a guy like Helinski as he continues to move forward in his young career? Well, I think it's been really good for both players from the standpoint of number one competition because competition makes you all better. And at the end of the day, when you know you got to walk in the building every day, whether it's in meeting room, whether it's a walkthrough, whether it's a practice, and you got to bring your A game all the time, that, can, that promotes consistency in your performance as a player. And I think, obviously, Collins' experience in the offense is going to be helping Ryan because those guys, at the end of the day, they both want to win, and they want to help South Carolina win. So they've worked very well together. Let's go to Gene Sapikoff. Hey, Will, a belated thanks for your really nice tribute to Rick there. Um, just kind of a little bit off the field, what sort of empathy do you have for, like, the band, the cheerleaders, the mascots, and other people kind of impacted by what's going on with the virus in college football? Well, it's, it's impacted you know, us all in so many ways, and you think about our, our loyal fan base, you know, not, not being able to have 80,000 strong on September 26. Uh, you know, that's, that's a that's – a, it's an unfortunate situation that we're all going through. And I think we've all experienced some form of loss, uh, you know, uh, going through this, this pandemic that we're, we're traveling through and uh, hoping to get back to as much normalcy as we can and playing football, uh, being able for our fan base. Hopefully we can get as many people in the stands. That's not a question for me. That's a question for Coach Tanner in case you're about to ask it. Uh, so, again, I, I, I hurt for them, uh, you know, as far as – you know, not being able to have the normalcy that we have at williams Bryce Stadium or when you go on the road in the Southeastern Conference to a place like, you know, Neyland Stadium or between the hedges or in the swamp or wherever the case may be to have that experience because there is something special about that in our league. But thank goodness we're playing football and thank goodness we're going to have that opportunity uh, this fall. And so I, I think that, you know, be – be mindful for what you what you have and and and, uh, and appreciate what you have, even though it may not be what you totally are used to having uh, in your life. But but specifically for I mean you've got students there. I'm talking about fellow students in the band, cheerleaders, mascots. How how hard must that be on them? Do you think? Oh, I, I think so. Now what Ray's told me is that the band's going to be at the games. What he's told me on the home games. I don't know about the away games, but certainly on the home games, which I would assume the cheerleaders are going to allow to be there. I don't know about, you know, what numbers of fans we're going to be able to have in the stands. I don't know all that. Again, that's a question for Coach Tanner. But, uh, yeah, I, I, there's no question that when you take away from the college experience, that was one thing in our meetings today with our players, all the defensive coaches in the defensive meeting got up and talked about their background, where they're from, their family, all kind of different things. And it was one thing I took from Tavares Robinson, from, from Rod Wilson, from Mike Peterson, and from Tracy Rocker is this is, the, this is the greatest time of your life. This is the best time of your life. You know, and it's interesting to hear, you know, you talk, talk about different guys, about what are your team goals, and then what are your personal goals? Well, I want to go to the league. Well, every, Tracy Rocker, Rod Wilson, T-Rob, and, and, uh, and, and Coach Rocker all played the National Football League. And they all cherish their college experience a lot more than they did in the NFL, regardless of how much money they made, the friendships they had, the guys that were in their weddings. Uh, the, 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 I mean, you know, Mike Peterson talked about Auburn Hill today. I mean, so that's the – cherish the time you have right now. It may not be exactly the same as it was, and it may not ever be. I don't know. Hopefully it will be. But to experience 
you know, the pageantry of the Southeastern Conference to, the, at South Carolina at williams Bryce Stadium, whether you're a cheerleader, whether you're a student in the stands, uh, whether you're a band member. It's, it's, it's disappointing for everybody about losing that part of that experience because that is special. Let's go to Hill McGranahan. That's having trouble unmuting myself. Um, with linebacker being a little short-handed these next couple weeks, um, who are you going to look to in the middle where, where Ernest would would be, and uh, how we guys kind of juggle that as you wait for those three guys to get back into the mix? Well, right now, you know, Damani's playing the mic in the Sam. Brad Johnson's playing the Sam. Gil Gilbert Edmond, who's a freshman, has come on and played the Sam pretty well for us. But Damani can play both positions. Sherrod can play the mic in the wheel. Mo Cobb has been a young player we've been really impressed with. But we're going to get Ernest back. We're going to get Spencer Easton Riddle back. We'll eventually uh, get Rosendo back. So I feel like, you know, we don't need to – panic or anything, we're, we're, we'll, we'll end up being fine at the position. Jamar Brown's an, a guy that can always go play the dime slash will for us in any situation. Uh, so, again, I feel very pretty comfortable about the, 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 the skill set we got there. Which of those spots will, will Mo get his first look at? He's going to play will and dime. Let's go to Mike Cuba. Last time we spoke, you mentioned that, you know, that travel squad could be, you know, usually 70, but – depending on how many people you do take in terms of, of handling this with the virus going on. Um, could that number be a little bit smaller for home games in comparison to years past? And has the SEC put any kind of regulations out in terms of trying to shorten that or make that smaller? No, right now it's at 70, and I, I would assume that it would probably be at the same number. Um, but, you know, I told the guys, and I'm going to tell them again tonight, if you're not playing, you ain't traveling. Uh, you know, we're going to be taking guys that are going to be playing and not just eating a, eating a steak, at, you know, at, at, before the game and an orange at halftime. You know, we got to have guys that are playing. Let's go to Phil Kornblut. Okay, okay. Uh, I know that you're happy playing football and, and moving forward. I'm, I'm wondering, have you taken any time and, and thought about, you know, what the Pac-12, the Big Ten, and many of these other conferences are doing by not playing in the fall and just wonder if you're doing the right thing, if the SEC and the ACC and the the, uh, the Big 12 are doing the right thing, or any players come to you and kind of question, uh, considering, you know, most of the nation is shutting down for the fall, but you guys are moving forward. Um, any lack of confidence uh, coming from any parts? No. I, You know, again, I think, Phil, we've been very transparent with our players. Uh, there's been a lot of questions. You know, we've had a lot of team meetings. We've had a lot of position meetings. We've had a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of meetings with our leadership group about the different things we need to do to make them feel comfortable with where we are moving forward. And certainly we've had two players that have decided to opt out, and I totally respect and understand their decision. I, I totally understand it. We're all at risk right now, coaches, players, staff members. Uh, but I trust, you know, Commissioner Sankey, our medical task force that he has put together that feels like that it is safe as we continue to move forward. And as long as it continues that route, uh, that's I've got to trust in their leadership, and I do trust in their leadership, uh, that they're making the best decisions because we said from the onslaught that the wealth, the health and the well-being of the student athletes was the most important thing. And, and I believe that, that it, every decision we make is about that decision. And uh, I've got to trust that they, they're doing what's best. And I, I look at the numbers in every state in our footprint in the Southeastern Conference. I talk to coaches about their positives. And, and in every building, it is much, much less than it is in the, each state. Uh, whether we play football or not, Phil, coronavirus is not, it's, it's not going away. It's going to be here. And in my personal opinion, and I'm not a doctor, shutting our country down is not the best thing to do. I can assure you of that. So – Right now, the medical task force people, the experts, are telling us that they feel it's safe to play at this time. Could that change? Certainly could change. But at this time, they feel like it's a safe, it is safe enough to play. And again, their health and well-being of the student athletes is paramount. Let's go to Pete Acabelli. Well, uh, uh, getting to football, I mean, obviously last year you guys struggled a little bit. The offseason normally – Every day would it be about, hey, we only won four games last year. We need to improve in all the phases. Do you feel like there was any kind of drop off on the focus and fire because of what we're dealing with amongst your players? Well, I think that, you know, players, 
you know, are all competitors. Uh, all guys are motivated differently. And I think as you continue to harp on uh, the negativity of last season, which we didn't, we didn't, we weren't consistent enough defensively. Uh, we lost confidence as, as the year went on offensively. We didn't do enough to help the quarterback position after we lost Jake, whether it was Ryan playing to carry on, Jay Urich, whoever was playing that position. We didn't help that position enough as coaches. And that's me. There's nobody blaming anybody. So at the end of the day, we've got to do a better job with that, which I, obviously you make changes. And I think we've made the right changes. I'm excited about Mike. I got a lot of confidence in Mike. I think Mike's um, experience, I think his uh, – success that he's had offensively brings a lot of confidence to our players offensively and we needed that and and uh, they're really excited in the five days that they were exposed to him in spring practice and in the time we've had to be able to be on the field with our players and have some walkthroughs you know you, you can see some excitement with our guys which we had, we didn't have that late in the year offensively um, then I'm you know defensively we just need to be more consistent we, we did some good things at times uh, we gave up 35 points when our defense won on the field, and a lot of that was on special teams. We needed to be better in our coverage and return units. Uh, so, again, there, there's some improvement certainly out there for us, and, and we're looking forward to it. And I think that you, know, you can continue to bring up the negativity of it uh, or just continue to be very constructive and learn from some things we've got to do. We're less than 50% scoring touchdowns in the red zone. That's hard to win. It's very difficult to win if you can't do that. So there's some things that, that we have pointed to as a staff to our players that are really important that we must make some strides. We only outscored our opponents three times in the fourth quarter for the entire season. So there's some obvious things that we have pointed to that we've got to improve on and that we plan on improving on. Dick Hex has the next question. Dick. Coach, with all the unknowns about the upcoming season, what are your biggest concerns going into the season? Um, well, I think obviously when you're installing a new offense, you got to form your identity. Uh, what is that identity going to be? Uh, I, I have a good feel, but I, I want to see how things continue to transpire as we move forward as far as those things are concerned. Uh, the comfort level of that identity w with our players. Uh, we've got some youth at the running back position. Like I said before, well, I think we've got some ability, but, but we're young at the position. You know, concerned about the receiver position of having some guys step up. Again, I think we have guys that have the ability, uh, but, but, but those guys need to step up and, and play the way they're capable of playing and being more dependable at the position because I do think we've got some ability at the position. You lose a guy like Javon Kinlaw and Dennis Wallum up front, two very productive players for us. I think we've recruited well. I think we have some guys that are willing, are, are willing and more than capable of stepping up and, and filling those voids extremely well. But I, I like it linebacker what we've got back and in the secondary what we've got back with the experience that we have. Uh, you know, as far as those things are concerned, we're going to have a new punter. You know, Joseph was an outstanding punter. We're, we're going to have a new punter uh, that needs to come in there and be able to flip the field and, and control the field position like Joe did it at multiple times and how he helped us. So, again, you know, I would say probably the biggest concerns up front we would be uh, at the receiver position, at running back, you know, with the youth that we have at those positions, and then up front defensively and in, in, in guys that are demanding double teams and that can win the one-on-ones. Next question goes to Ben Briner. Uh, hey, well, what is the turnaround time for COVID testing your program? How fast are you kind of finding out uh, about potential positives and how much flexibility is, does that kind of give you or how much of an impediment is it uh, if it's not that fast? No, it's, it's, we have improved tremendously uh, from June. And I, I do want to thank Bill and Lou Kennedy at Nephron Pharmaceutical have been such great Gamecocks and supported uh, our entire university, but also the athletic department as well and the football program. They've been wonderful. But generally, that turnaround's happening within the day. Next question goes to David Kloniger. A little off topic here, but Auburn did get added to the schedule. You've got a long history with yeah. Auburn. Just what are your most outstanding memories of that first time that you got hired, your first college gig? Uh, in, in 07? No, when you were graduate assistant. Yeah, yeah, 1990, uh, 1995. Yeah, a long time ago there, Dave. Uh, but uh, it's a great place. It's great people. Uh, you know, really, I've had three different tenures there as a, as a graduate assistant in 95 and 96, and then went back as a coordinator in uh, 07 and 08, 06 and 07. 
and then back in 15 and, and when Gus hired me. So it's a, it's a great place with wonderful people. Uh, and I, was, I took my son, Witt, to throw with a, a throwing guy down in Mobile and, and was able to see Antonio Coleman, one of my old players. I called him up and met him, uh, met him down in Mobile to talk and talk about some of the great times we had. That was about a month ago. Uh, but just a just a wonderful experience. Uh, uh, remember going there in '95 in and, and uh, with Coach Bowden, uh, Terry Bowden, and then uh, uh, you know was fortunate to work under Wayne Hall as a defensive coordinator. Actually, Coach Tracy Rocker uh, in in college, and then uh, Bill Oliver. Uh, who came the next year and, and worked with him. So I got to work for two of the better coordinators that ever worked in our league uh, and really in college football from that standpoint. Uh, but, but just wonderful learning experiences, but Auburn's a great place, great, great people and a, a wonderful place to live. Next question goes to John Whittle. You, know, you and Mike both spoke in the spring about you know getting guys in this summer, the freshmen in this summer. Uh, to identify playmakers and getting into the fall before y'all really knew and understood what y'all's strengths were as, as an offense. Is, when do you hope to have a good feel for that and, and how to kind of put together game plans and, and so forth based on those strengths? Well, I think, John, after that first scrimmage, you, you take those first nine days uh, and, and you start kind of formulating who we need to continue to point to because you really have two weeks of practice and then you're starting into game preparation. So after the ninth practice, you start uh, whittling down the number of reps and where you're repping guys because those next two weeks, uh, you're going to continue to improve what you've got because really your base installation is done after insta install nine. Then you're just working on some different gimmicks, third down uh, looks, some, some, you know, some different things that you might be doing game plan lies, especially for the first ball game, uh, especially. So I think after that first scrimmage, you got to start narrowing down Rep wise, you know where where guys are repping, so you can continue to build the depth on your team, uh, but but find out the guys that can help you make plays. And have you let Clyde Wren back into the building yet? Yep, yeah, Clyde's Clyde started training camp thirty five today, or thirty six today, I think is what he said. So he's uh, I have made, he, we had to yell at him a couple of times about his mask. He didn't keep his mask on, but uh, but it's great to have him back in the building, and and uh, he's having a good time. Mike Uva with the next question. Mike. Well, what, what's this been like for you? Because obviously you've been coaching college football your whole life. You've been playing, you played college football. Uh, I know you mentioned a couple of weeks ago you're out with your son enjoying your birthday. That's not something you're probably used to doing. I mean, what's this like for a, for a head coach these last couple of weeks? Is the wife ready to just get you out of the house? Yeah, there's no doubt. Uh, no doubt about that. But uh, it is it is what it is. It's the, it's the situation we're in. And uh, – it's great to uh, to walk out today. To, we had a the, the team run today. Uh, Coach Jackson, we didn't practice today. We lifted them and ran them today. Uh, coming off, I gave them a three day weekend: Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then uh, to, to run them today a little bit and have have some opportunities to have meetings and things this afternoon. I thought it was really important to to get out and you walk out and you smell the grass and just cut the grass and. Uh, it's like uh, you get that feeling back very quickly. I wish we could have them in the building longer. Uh, they're happy they're not, they're not having to be in the building longer, uh, but that is what it is. But I'm excited about tomorrow getting back on the grass and coaching. That's what it's all about. And the last question there goes to Colin Taylor. Hey, well, sorry, my memory's not good, so I can't remember you asking or answering about him, but what have you seen from Jordan Birch in the limited time that you've been able to kind of work with him? And will he solely be Buck this season? Well, we'll move him around again. We, we need to get to our best rushers in our rabbits package, and he's certainly a guy that's exhibited some ability to possibly do that. Uh, he's been very bright. He catches on extremely well, very competitive uh, in the weight room, very competitive in the meeting room, very competitive when you're in the walkthrough situations. Mike Peterson has been really pleased with him and how he retains information uh, day to day. Uh, but again, Colin, we're a lot further along, especially for young players, because of the opportunities we've had since July 13th to, to spend time with our players and be teaching our players you know, uh, basic defenses that we're doing, uh, fundamentals and techniques that we're, we're a lot further along than we ever have been. I've actually sped the installation up a little bit as far as the days of when we work on certain things, whether it's red zone opportunities, third down, one minute, really about two days as far as, uh, you know, our installation is concerned because of where we are as far as installation. But he's doing fine, you know, but again, we've been in pajamas 
uh, this entire time. It's time to put on some – actually, we'll be in helmets again tomorrow and, and Wednesday. We've got an acclimatization period. Uh, we'll be in shells on Friday and Saturday and then full gear on Monday and Tuesday, have a lift day. We'll have another test day. We'll test once a week uh, as far as COVID is concerned throughout training camp. And then, um, and then a shells practice Thursday, a helmets practice Friday, and then a scrimmage on Saturday. And that'll be that'll conclude practice nine, which obviously we've got to continue to start uh, narrowing some things down when we get there. Seeing no other hands up, but we think that is more than enough for today. All right, y'all have a great day.